Good morning. We are just prepping to leave. We gotta keep moving, but before we can do that, we need to get a cruising permit. When we first checked in here, uh, the customs officer kind of advised us not to get the cruising permit, or almost made it seem like it wasn't an option, but all the research that we've done suggests otherwise. In order for us to make some stops along the way, just in case, you know, we get tired or, you know, we want to see some of the other little bays, uh, we need that cruising permit. Hopefully they'll give us that because that would make our life a little bit easier. Um, the, the northern coastline is pretty long, so it would take us about like 20 hours to just to get to Montego Bay. So that would be a, lo a longer sail than we, we want to do. We've got a little bit of wind today, but after that it just dies. Um, hopefully we can catch it and get to our next bay, which is going to be... Which is going to be Orcabisa. 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 This sailing life isn't always the most convenient. Many times we have to be kind of creative on how we get to land. And sometimes that involves crawling up walls. Bye. Bye. While Bo goes and tries to search for custom and immigrations, I'm gonna go back to Sersha and get her ready, which she's also very inconvenient. We've always <laughs> joked with our friends that all they have to do is set a lamp on a SETI and they're ready to sail. Us, not so much. Sersha takes a little bit more to get ready. Supposedly customs here at the post office. We'll see. So that was not customs. Customs is all the way on the other side of town. So just gotta take a little nice little walk on this little pathway here. And hopefully this is the right spot. done just in time to pick up Bo who is standing in the water waiting for his pickup. Honestly I'm not getting good vibes from being here. The overall feeling here is that people don't really care for tourists um, which hey you know that's understandable but that aside uh, the customs and and trying to get from port to port has been a little frustrating because we were told by friends that they got a cruising permit and didn't have to pay or go through any hassle whereas being here we're hearing from customs that you need to apply online for a six month cruising permit which costs I think $150 so it's just it's frustrating on our part because we don't want to be here six months we don't even want to be here six weeks we just want to be here for like two weeks because we got to get to Guatemala 
So to pay $150 for a couple weeks is just not worth it for us. So we probably shouldn't even have stopped. But on top of all of that, we also are seeing some storms forming in the Caribbean and we are actually gonna try to head as far over west as possible today in order to stage up and our first weather window will probably head out to Guatemala. Now that we've started seeing activity, we know that we're pushing our luck by even being here. So we gotta get moving. We almost right. ready? Raise the main. We are currently looking at 88.5 nautical miles to Montego Bay. Who knows how long that'll take. You think we're gonna have to jive or do you, are we just gonna turn? I think we're just gonna turn. Uh, where's the point coming from? Directly from the east at the moment. Directly east. A slight smidgen of south. Bye bye, Port Antonio. You were gorgeous. And that right there is why I'm not super excited about sailing at night because from what we understand the fishing lures pots plastic containers are littered all throughout the coast and we want to stay as close as possible but and we'll probably be running our our motor so not super excited about that and I don't I think the moon is pretty much gone at this point that's just more look at this must be a good fishing spot. Jackson. Is it shifting? And that is why we have preventers on. Yep, thank goodness we had a preventer. That would have been a bad jive. So the wind shifted enough and Wilson was on the I guess the bad side of it to where the wind backfilled our head our mainsail because we kind of had that on the weak side of the wind, which we're actually gonna switch after doing all that work of setting all up all these preventers and poles. And, but we realized that we, we had it all backwards. So now we gotta put our head sail on our starboard side and our main sail on our port side. steps to doing this. We're gonna bring the main into center. You're gonna go to the front and take the preventer off first? Yep. And then I'll bring, you're gonna keep a hold of it though, right? Yeah, okay. I'll keep tension on it, that way it doesn't try to jive over on us. Go, I'm ready. And then 
center that. And then, and then we'll point in a little, jive the main, jive the head first. Jive the pole. Jive the pole. Can you loosen that head sail a little bit? For some reason, Wilson does not want to keep up with this wind and the waves, so I'm unable to help him. Or I would go forward and help him, but I have to steer instead. Can you throw that toward me? I can hold it for you. Can you come up and grab it or no? So I'm kind of keeping an eye on where the whisker pull is in reference to the shroud so it won't hit. Another tip, we cleat in the sheet so it doesn't go flying off, which has happened more than once. So we learned our lesson. We need this sheet line to be a little bit longer now that we have a whisker pull. The one on our port is fine, it's long enough, but <laughs> we've had to fish it out of water a couple times. Lessons learned. Bo is going to put in the preventer now while I hold the aft preventer. It'll come tighten this in in a second. <sighs> this way the whisker pole's not running around, bouncing around, because with these waves it would be. Then drive the head.
then um, release out the main. It's a beautiful day out. Bah, bah, bah. So we have nasty gray skies over the mountains and we have nice blue skies over the ocean. We're just gonna sit over here and watch this side. Yep, don't pay attention to the nastiness. Luckily, we're getting a northeast wind, which is blowing this way. So we're hoping it's keeping that on the horizon over there, over the mountains. But I think it's also contributing to the wind that we're getting. So we're, we're not really wanting it to go away. We just don't want it to come out here. <laughs> shifted and now we've got to switch this up again.
well, not more than five, 10 minutes after we did all of that switch. Now it's coming from our beam. So now we have to kind of undo what we did, jibe over the head sail and tighten it up. Just coiled all that up and nice and neat too. Of course. And then we're going to release the forward preventer for the main. Hopefully we can take advantage of this and get a nice beam reach. And we're back to doing seven. Seven knots? <laughs> yep. Nice. Didn't lose any speed. Well, we were only doing five then. Oh, before. okay. So we gained some speed. Yeah. It finally happened. We lost <laughs> all the wind. We have literally done every point of sail there is today. Right now we're going into we're, the wind. But we're only burning about 600 watts and we're, what, doing five about knots? Four knots, four and a half, five. So that, that's I mean, the waves are good. non-existent. So yeah, it is. Good. It's probably gonna be like this the rest of our trip. We have 58 nautical miles left to get to Montego Bay. Currently we're passing Ocho Rios and funny story, back when Bo and I used to do cruising, um, Ocho Rios was a stop that we had made on a cruise that we actually got engaged on. But it's just- Man, that was a long yeah. time ago. Everyone here keeps asking, oh, have you been here before? And we're like, oh yeah, yeah. On a cruise, not on our own boat. I gotta so. tell you, it's way different being here on your own boat. Um, I don't know, it's just... It's different seeing a country from its shoreline. It's yeah. it's almost more... Sur it's, um, it's got a, a more peaceful feel to it. It's like once you get on land, then it's it can be a little more in your face and chaotic. But... We will be probably cruising into the night and a little bit into the morning. We'll so, definitely be cruising into the night. Yeah, we probably won't make it till, what, the afternoon tomorrow? Dependent, it's saying 5.30 right now, 6 a.m. Saying we're gonna go four knots, which it four to five knots, but if we lose more wind, then it's gonna be longer than that. Yeah. It's a lot of debris. Yeah. We're seeing a lot of, it looks almost looks like uh, baby bananas. But it's not. Floating. And we've seen some logs, which is concerning, but we're not going fast anymore, so not yeah. horrible, but It's yeah. not that concerning. But yeah, when we were going eight knots, it was. <laughs> we're getting kind of an orangey sunset. Yeah. We set sail into the moon Tell tall tales to the morning view A plans and schemes seem so serene Amongst the stars red, gold and green Give it all in the autumn fall.
right where we left you. It is bright and early in the morning. Um, I've been on watch since about two. Bo took the first watch. Um, nothing really exciting happening. We had some thundering and lightning going off on the coast, which <laughs> thank goodness it did not hit us. Um, we are still on a beam reach and currently we're going 5.4, which is totally unexpected. I don't know if it's the catabatic winds off the mountain or what it is, but I'm grateful that it's here. We did do a lot of motoring overnight. It was so calm all night. I just watched the city lights and the coast lights. It's just beautiful here. Um, I'm kind of sad we're not gonna be able to explore a lot of it, but we've gotta get going. We probably shouldn't have stopped here. We just wanted to have a rest between Puerto Rico and Guatemala and Jamaica was smack dab in the middle. Since we're so late to the season, we really don't have the time that we should spend in a country <laughs> the size of Jamaica with so many ports of things to do, but. I'm heading to Montego Bay right now. Uh, we are currently 12.8 nautical miles away. So hopefully um, we'll be there by nine if we keep this up, but um, if the wind dies, it will be a little bit longer. We're just gonna have to stage up. We have a tropical storm that's supposedly forming on this side that we're keeping an eye on. And once that is done, we are heading out of here. Maybe we'll get lucky and have a nice sail out. <laughs> Wasn't a bad, too bad of a sail. Thankfully, we're going downwind with the current and all that. I swear there's a two knot current. Yeah, probably. It's been an easy morning. He slept most of it, but yeah. then he cooked breakfast. Brandy let me sleep, got six hours in, feel rested. And now we're at Montego Bay. This is gonna be a busy, busy bay. We've got dive boats. We got a lot of planes, um, but we need to find an anchor spot and figure out how to do our other check-in for customs to let them know that we arrived here. We dropped anchor in front of this restaurant called Pier 1. We tried calling the customs agency, nobody picked up. And we did read some reviews that there's a guy's shop called CJ's Water Sports. He supposedly can coordinate customs to come out, but <laughs> he just, we, I got on the phone with him and he said, that uh, he just asked where we were at and he's coming towards us. So I don't know if he's jumping in a boat to come see us or if I gotta jump in my boat. It was very unclear and uh, you know, it was very short conversation and he just hung up on us. So not sure what's going on. This is kind of what we have are having a little bit of hard time with. There's literally no information and the information you do get, it's a little, 
you have to kind of go off with other cruisers and this person was able to check in right where we're at and bring in customs and immigration to the boat here by using the water sports person. However, when it, since the, the person still hasn't shown up, I called customs and could not get a hold of customs. So I called the yacht club that's nearby here in Montego Bay, where I know that people have checked in there before. Um, and she said to call customs. She gave me a supervisor's number. Long story short, geez Louise. The customs agent told me, the supervisor told me I needed to bring the big boat over to Montego Bay Yacht Club and check in there because they needed to see the boat. I hung out with her. I called back to the Montego Bay and the person there stated that we could bring the dinghy over and just check in with paperwork. So now she's calling the supervisor with customs to see because I told her well, they told me that we'd have to check in the boat. I don't want to go over by dinghy. And then they say that we need to come over by boat. It's just been, yeah, it's, a, it's, it's difficult traveling to an island that a lot of cruisers don't travel to because there's no good resource to follow. It's just, you may have gotten lucky with the person that you spoke to or you did it. And at this point, it seems like we're not getting so lucky, but hopefully we can just dinghy over to the yacht club because we don't really want to bring the big boat over. <sighs> Most frustrating stop ever. <laughs> All right, good news. I just got off the phone with the yacht club. We just have to bring the dinghy over, do some paperwork, and then wait for the customs agent. So, yay! If you're coming to Jamaica and you need to check in with customs, and you've already checked into the country, just go to the yacht club and they'll take care of it for $10 and you can drop off your trash. <laughs> Of course, now that we're all checked in, we finally heard back from CJ. While we were gone doing the paperwork at the yacht club, apparently he came by and was looking for us. But before we went to the yacht club and called everybody, we did try to reach out to them again multiple times and couldn't get a hold of them. That's why we had to go another route because we didn't want to get the late fees um, by checking in after five o'clock. Now that we're experts at the check-in process, we get to put those skills to test because we need to check out in the next few days. There's a weather system passing by and once that's gone, hopefully we'll have a nice window to leave. But we do have a few chores that we need to take care of and uh, we need to schedule that checkout time. We've got to get to Guatemala because it's hurricane season, which we don't want to get caught in. If you guys like this video, give us a thumbs up, leave a comment, share it with a friend, a neighbor, a stranger, doesn't matter, just share it. <laughs> we appreciate you guys watching and we'll see you in the next one.